Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to do an American classic, beans and franks. And hey, let's make them from scratch and cook them in the Dutch oven. Y'all stay tuned. <music> So it's summertime and everybody's got a lot of, uh, I know we do, we got a lot of, we got a lot of hot dogs laying around, for, you know, 4th of July, summertime cookouts, get to get them things ate up. So I was sitting around to think about what to do with them this morning and I remembered, you know, back in the Boy Scouts, we used to make beans and franks all the time. So let me show you what you're going to need to make this dish from scratch, not out of the can. Okay, ingredients for this pretty simple. You're gonna need some uh, thick cut or uh, bacon or jowl bacon. We got jowl bacon, we love that. I have red beans a day. Uh, I would prefer to have used uh, white navy beans. I just didn't have any uh, around. So these red beans, these are small red beans. Start out with one, a little over a cup, and then you're gonna have to soak those overnight or use the fast soak method. You just bring them up to the bowl with a little bit of salt. We had some garlic in there also and then turn the fire off, set them aside, let them soak one hour, ready to go. Need some ketchup, need a can of diced tomatoes. We actually have some fresh tomatoes too. Uh, we're gonna go pick some more in a minute. Some fresh tomatoes to go in this. Of course, you're gonna need some uh, hot dogs. These are all beef sabret hot dogs. And we're gonna need some mustard. This is a great spicy uh, German mustard directly from our family members in Germany. If you don't have that, use spicy mustard. And you're gonna need a large onion. So we've got our charcoal already started here in the chimney and we got some camp made coconut charcoal going there today. Gonna to be a long cook time. So I'm I, uh, gonna give that a shot. We we did a review on this charcoal, uh, you know, a few months ago. I'll leave you a link to that video down in the description box. But we, we haven't actually cooked on it yet. So today's gonna be the first time. And then we have our 10 inch lodge, shallow Dutch oven. You can use your deep. And if you're making a bigger uh, portion, obviously you can use the 12. All right, we're gonna take our, this is our homemade uh, cleaver. One of my favorite knives for using outdoor cooking. It's made from an actual uh, 12 inch circular saw blade, an old one. So we're gonna go ahead and clean our onion. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. This is one of our homegrown. Uh, organic ones actually. Um, we had a small organic area here at the house. These were uh, like the same variety as the Vidalia, which is the yellow granix hybrid. They make beautiful onions, and we're going to need quite a bit of onions for this dish. So I usually cut it in half that way first, and then we'll take and follow the lines in the onion. Do that all the way around, and I'm not cutting. I'm not cutting all the way through this part. Okay, and I can turn it, and we'll just go straight through. And you're going to have perfectly chopped onions every time. to do after I get all my onions chopped I'm gonna take uh, some Seminole Swamp seasoning here and I'm gonna season those onions before we put them into the uh, into the pot and what's gonna happen is the salt and the seasoning is actually gonna pull some of the moisture out of them and uh, help them become much firmer because that's actually that'll make a puddle on a on a cutting board there after a while and we just have to keep in mind that we already have season and some salt in those onions, I'll turn them in that seasoning. And they're gonna soak that up and become wonderful. So we're just waiting on our charcoal now and we'll get the Dutch oven fired up and get this process started. Okay, so while we're waiting for our charcoal, we're gonna go out and uh, get a few more tomatoes. And I tell you, the weather has really been hampering our ability to grow anything this year. Uh, came a flood here yesterday afternoon, but we got this tomato tree starting up here and she's got quite a few on her we're trying to make it run down the wire 
I had this one tied up, but apparently the storm blew him loose. And you see the leaves are kind of turning. It's been so much, so wet, just very difficult. But hey, but what we don't get, the chickens will. Let's go check in on chickens. Here's my, my three girls. Uh, they're not camera shy. They just want me to let them out right now so they can dig. Okay, so we're just gonna pick us some of these, uh, these nice bright cherry tomatoes. I only need about a handful and it gets really, when it gets really wet, they start splitting like this. So if you don't use them right away, uh, they go bad. So we'll add those to what we got. I'll show you how to prep them. So our coals are looking pretty ready. Now, if you see my review of this charcoal in the earlier video, you know, I did tell you that it breaks apart very easily. So we're gonna handle it very carefully. All right, I'm gonna get some of these that are the most lit from down at the bottom. And we're gonna put kind of a layer. We need bottom heat here. So I'm not gonna put it in a ring. We're just gonna kind of put it in a in a layer you see how they break so I'm trying to handle them very carefully but they do keep burning when they break open like that believe me so we're going to get about eight or ten like i said we need bottom heat right now but we do need even heat so we'll try to put them in a nice even configuration gonna bring over our 10 inch dutch oven I get that joker on top and get the lid off of it. Glad I checked. I got my lodge stand inside. I'm going to let it preheat. While it's preheating, I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in it. All right, that's only taken like two minutes, and we're already seeing a little smoke coming up from the oil in the pan. I'm going to go ahead and dump in our bacon. And we hear that beautiful sizzling sound that all you guys really seem to love on the channel there. We'll give that a minute. our bacon is starting to render the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to bring these over without the water these are our tomatoes and I want to kind of put them in there a few at a time because I want to actually caramelize those a bit and if you get too much of them in there at one time you'll get too much water that won't evaporate and uh, if you have to always bring a few more of your coals nestle them up around the side Need a really hot pot here. Okay, so when are these tomatoes ready? Your nose will tell you. They're gonna start turning dark. Their skins are gonna start to get color on them. And, you know, they're just gonna get beautiful like that. Okay? We don't wanna burn them. So, we're right now, it's time to go in. We're gonna go in with, these are our onions. We're gonna go in and we're gonna scoop them off like we did the tomatoes, leaving that water at the bottom. 
All right, we're gonna take about half of our onions. That's gonna be close to three quarters of a cup. We'll go ahead and bring them in there and they're gonna bring up some of the fawn from the tomatoes that's left in the bottom. They're also bringing in the seasoning, okay? So we're gonna let them sweat in there for a little bit. And as the water releases, what remaining water is in them, it'll pick up that tomato uh, caramelization from the bottom of the pot. We're, what we're doing is making a super rich, super rich sauce for our beans. Okay, so you can see how those onions have picked up that beautiful gold color from the caramelized tomatoes. And most of them are softened now. So we're gonna go ahead and dump in our beans. Just gonna put them right in there. We'll follow that up with just enough water to cover, just about cover them, just, just barely cover them. Okay, and then we're gonna mix it all together. Make sure you get all that goody up from the bottom. There you go, just enough to cover them. Then we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Bring that up to a simmer. Now we got some more coals going to help out the process. Meantime, we're gonna go ahead and take what we had left over. We didn't have a, we only had a partial bag of those can't made coconut ones, but we're gonna put them right up on the top of our Dutch oven. That'll bring that temperature up. And we can always adjust this if it gets too hot. All right, guys, it's been about 35, 40 minutes. I did, I'm keeping an eye on this for water level. I just added more water. And this time now, those beans are about three quarters away cooked. I just tested one, starting to taste done. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my can of diced tomatoes now. We'll stir those in there. Now, obviously, if you have enough fresh tomatoes, use fresh tomatoes. I don't have enough of those. So the weather's fighting us this year. So we're gonna go ahead and put them in there. The lid back on. I did add five more coals to the top. And it's simmering along real nice. So at this point, we can walk away from it a little bit. Just keep an eye on it every 20 minutes for water level. It's been about 45 minutes. I go in and give that a nice stir. Starting to make a nice sauce. Those beans are almost done. So at this point, we're gonna put in our our frank burgers, our franks, and the rest of our onions that we had. I, I saved these to the end so that they will still have some texture in the final product. You know, that long cook time is going to break down those first set that we put in there pretty quickly. So we're going to kind of toss them in there. We're also going to go in a little black pepper. Do that to taste. To help with the sauce, we're going to give it a little squirt of the Hunt's ketchup, okay? And to help thicken it all up, which is getting pretty thick now, you can see that real quick. You may have to actually put a little water back in there. I'm going to go with a little bit, what's better with the Franks than mustard? So I'm going to put a little bit of that German spicy mustard in there. Believe me, this stuff mm, is delicious. Woo! And it's got a kick. We'll stir that in real good. Scrape everything down from the sides. You know, I didn't skip on the hot dogs here either. I was eight big sabrats. So that nice flavor, it's gonna start cooking out of those. So let's get back the lid back on there and all you need is about another 10, 15 minutes at the most. Actually, it's looking a little thick right now. Give it a, just a dash of water, quarter cup. I don't want anything sticking or burning here, so. Looks good. Come back on with our lid. 10, 15 minutes, we'll be ready to eat.
I've been about 10 minutes uncovered. Just let that uh, keep simmering uncovered. It's about the consistency we want as that cool is going to firm up a little bit. So right now, we're going to go ahead and take it off the fire, set it to the side, let it cool down a little bit, and we'll be ready to eat. Hey guys, well, the beans and franks are done, so now it's time to the plate, backwards gourmet style. Okay, we got our plate and bowl. You know, this is a kind of a, like a stew. So we're gonna bring some of that over right now, our wooden spoon. Let's make sure we get plenty of that, that juice from down in there. It's really thickened up beautifully nice. Smells awesome too, by the way. Some beans and franks there. All this needs for garnish. We got a little bit of green onion cut on the bias. Right there. Let me tell you what. This ain't no beanie weenies. Let's give so this I'm a try. I'm just going to go right in the pot here. Give me a little right on the serving spoon. Mm. I'm tell you what, you know, there's a reason why this dish is an American classic because A, it's cheap to make, B, it's easy to make, and C, it tastes delicious. So next time you're out camping, hey, uh, you know, or if you're just hanging around home like we are today, and you got some hot dogs and some beans, sure to try this recipe. It's a true, true favorite around here and with, all, and with a lot of people. So I guarantee your kids will love it. Do this at camp and you'll be a big star. Thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. Hey, please go down here in the description box below. Check out the links to the products we use here. Also, I'm going to leave you the link in the very first comment below to our Amazon store where you can get some great deals on outdoor cooking gear. If you like what we're doing, please hit the like button right there. To subscribe to our channel, you can do it right here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right up there. And for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.